Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great time at the Precise Workshop in Garching. Unfortunately, I can't join you this time because I caught my second round of Corona just before the workshop. Uh, but anyway, I want to talk to you about partition flow simulations with open foam and precise, uh, which I worked on in the context of my master's thesis together with Marcus. So my name is Marcus. I'm, uh, I graduated of the CSE program at the Technical University in Munich. And I'm also going to start my PhD there um, later this year. So what is uh, partition flow? So flow partitioning uh, might be relevant because uh, fluid simulations, as many of you know, are inherently complex and computationally expensive because there are so many aspects that we have to consider. So that's why we often use simplified models to that fit uh, the characteristics of the flow that we want to simulate. For example, looking at this image which symbolizes the wind flow around buildings so these blue squares um, these are buildings and there's also the blue uh, streamlines the re blue regions that are just behind the buildings or around the buildings and that's where the flow has the recirculations and we might be more interested in the flow details in these regions so we want to use a sophisticated fluid model that describes the motion of the fluid very accurately here but then there's also the large space or the large area of the that is marked in orange. And here we might not be interested so much in the details. And here we could use a simpler model. So that's where partitioning might be interesting. So we can use different mathematical models to simulate the regions that are marked in blue and then the other region that is uh, depicted as orange. So fluid or flow partitioning, in my case, our case with precise, means that we use a surface coupling, so there's no overlap in the uh, regions. And that this is done basically by simply cutting a monolithic domain, in this case in two uh, participants, participant one on the left and participant two on the side and right, and they are connected uh, via a common coupling interface. And at this coupling interface, we exchange the flow relevant variables, um, mainly velocity and pressure, as well as their gradients, using the coupling tool Precise. Um, like I mentioned, the tools that I was using are Precise and OpenFoam as the fluid solvers. And OpenFoam, most of you probably know, is a versatile toolbox of continuum mechanic solvers, uh, most of which use the finite volume method. And Precise is the coupling tool that we are all here to talk about. And most of you by now also know that OpenFoam, uh, that Precise provides several adapters. In this case, the OpenFoam adapter that attach to the corresponding solvers, in this case, the OpenFoam solvers. And these adapters then can communicate to the main library of Precise, uh, which handles the communication, data mapping, and the coupling schemes and everything uh, regarding the coupling of the two participants. So in my case of fluid-fluid coupling, I uh, mainly use impl serial implicit coupling. And I want to uh, go to the through the main flowchart of a serial implicit coupling uh, quickly. So we have solver A, which is solver 1 on the left side and solver B on the right side. And because we have serial uh, coupling, solver A starts solving the equation on its domain first, while solver B is still waiting in line until solver A has finished and precise sends the uh, variables from the coupling interface boundary from solver A to solver B and adjusts the boundary conditions there. Only then starts uh, is the time for solver B to start solving the equations and then precise again sends the values that we um, requested that should be exchanged from solver B to solver A. And now before advancing to the next time step, because we have an implicit coupling scheme, we check if the exchange variables have converged, meaning if the quantities have changed uh, a lot compared to the last iteration. And if that is the case, meaning that we have not converged yet, um, we reset the internal fields of the fluid solvers and do the whole iteration again only the boundary conditions, they stay updated from the previous iteration. And we do this until these exchange variables at the coupling interface um, 
have converged and then we advance to the next time step of the simulation. So um, the fluid fluid module of the open foam adapter already existed when I started working on my master's thesis, but it was not really tested a lot. It was only um, yeah in a rudimentary state. So I investigated this module using several test cases. And the first one is just a simple uh, standard pipe scenario, uh, which looks something like this. It's a simple 2D uh, pipe with a very coarse mesh. At the left, we have the inlet with a 0 0.1 meters per second velocity and a zero gradient pressure. And on the right, we have the outlet boundary conditions of a zero velocity gradient and zero pressure. And this pipe is simply cut in the middle into the left half and the right half. So the two participant, participants in our coupled simulation. And by cutting the domain in half, we have this additional coupling interface where we have to again set the boundary conditions and this these uh, boundary conditions are set via precise. So these are the exchange values in, in precise. Only the velocity gradient, which uh, I have written in red here, um, the velocity gradient is kept at zero because looking at the monolithic solution above, we can see that the velocity across the coupling interface uh, does not change. So because we have no uh, we don't expect any change of velocity gradient here. We just set a zero ve uh, velocity gradient and leave this out of the coupling equation to make things a bit simpler. So looking at the results, these are the monolithic results first, which we compare our coupled results um, to. On the left hand side, you can see the pressure graph and on the right hand side is the velocity graph. And the values are sampled along this black uh, line in the center of the pipe. The pressure values or the pressure graph is zoomed in a little bit, which you can see in the box uh, above the graph. And the dashed line always symbolizes the coupling interface or where the coupling interface will be for the coupled simulation. And you can see the pressure is steadily decreasing from uh, left to right, so going downstream, which is to be expected uh, because we have no slip uh, boundary conditions at the walls and due to the viscous forces we experience this pressure drop along the pipe. On the right hand side we can see the velocity. We have a uniform uh, velocity profile at the inlet and again due to the no slip boundary condition and the uh, viscous forces we have this Poiseuille uh, profile that is well studied that develops um, going from left to right and from uh, 10 to 15 meters in that direction then the profile has fully developed and the velocity does not change any further. So what does our coupled uh, simulation the results look like? So these are re the results of the coupled simulation uh, exchanging velocity pressure and the pressure gradient as mentioned. And you can see on the left hand side, the pressure graph is a little bit offset compared to the monolithic uh, solution, which, uh, okay, is, it's a bit offset, but on the right hand side, the velocity graph, um, there's a huge jump of velocity uh, right at the interface, which is very unphysical and should be avoided because this means we are introducing basically a saw source, a mass source. Um, because this also means that the mass flux is increasing here. So I was investigating why this is happening. And finally, after quite a while, I found a boundary condition of open foam, which is called the fixed flux extrapolated pressure boundary condition. I will call this FFEP for in short. And this already mentions that it uses a fixed flux and this boundary condition uh, can be set instead of the pressure gradient because this boundary condition calculates the pressure gradient automatically according to the uh, inlet velocity and setting this boundary condition for the pressure gradient in the coupling interface um, resolved the issue that i experienced before and you can see now the coupled results match pretty much identically the monolithic solution. Now this is a first success, but we have to keep in mind this was a very simple test case where we had a zero velocity gradient. So on my next test case, uh, which I call the half inlet pipe, um, couples, 
the domain at a location where the velocity is um, still changing. So this uh, pipe is called half inlet pipe because uh, on the left hand side only half of the boundary is the inlet, only the upper half. And this makes it uh, so that the velocity profile takes a bit longer to develop. And on the right hand side you can see where I cut the domain into two pieces. And here the velocity profile is still changing and we have a non-zero velocity gradient. So that's why we add the velocity gradient to the exchange variables to precise. And this is what we get as a result for the velocity graph. So the velocity values are again sampled and now at the black line that you can see in the image in the upper right. And you can see the coupled results uh, match the monolithic solution quite well. Only if you're zooming in uh, right next to the coupling interface, you can see in the cells next to the interface, uh, the velocity values are quite a bit off. So there's uh, quite a bit of an error here. And again, I was looking into all sorts of boundary condition, open foam and going through the open foam solvers uh, step by step. And I came to the conclusion that we are limited. And this is because, for example, the momentum equation is implemented in open form, uh, something like this. So we don't need to go into detail what all these terms mean, but you can recognize um, velocity and pressure or pressure gradient on the right. And the velocity and pressure, those are fields that are stored uh, permanently, so to say, uh, within the fluid solver and they are accessible from the adapter. And the adapter is implemented as an open foam function object and as such is called once per time step of the fluid solver and can access these fields, velocity and pressure. And each time step we modify the boundary conditions of these fields. So we use this accessibility of these fields. But then there's also these other orange terms, H by A and one by A. And these fields are created temporarily each time step. And they are not accessible from within our adapter because they don't uh, no longer exist at the time that we call the open form function objects. And the boundaries of these fields, they are simply extrapolated in zeroth order, meaning that the boundary values are just the same as in the cells next to the boundary. Uh, but this is a bit problematic if we have a velocity gradient because to make this equation uh, correct, when we have a non-zero velocity gradient at the boundary, we would also need a non-zero gradient for these fields h by a and 1 by a. But because these fields are not accessible from the adapter, we can't make this equation correct. So that's uh, what limits our results and we cannot get a perfect coupling interface. Now, some of you might ask, but open foam uses domain decomposition for parallelization as well. And you haven't heard of uh, such a problem here. And yes, that is true. But open form uh, for parallelization has the advantage that in the end it's still running on one. Um, it's still the same application. There's only one open form solver that uh, basically knows about all participants and automatically assigns parallel or special parallel boundary conditions for these uh, intermediate fields as well. And so open form linearly, ex uh, linearly interpolates the values at the uh, couple uh, boundaries for these fields as well, which we cannot do from within the adapter. So yes, that's a bit problematic. Uh, well, it's not too bad, but it means that we have a little bit of an error in the cells next to the interface which I showed you before. And I wanted to quantify this error a little bit so we can uh, get an estimate. And basically the error is somewhere for velocity is somewhere in between the difference of the uh, velocity values in the cells next to the interface uh, in the monolithic solution. So uh, UL and UR, which I marked on the right side as well in the graph. And this difference, uh, of course, first of all, depends on the magnitude of the velocity gradient, but it also depends on the discretization. So if we have a finer mesh, you can imagine that in the top graph, these uh, stairs, uh, 
uh, or these steps, they would be there would be smaller steps, and the difference of the cells values next to the interface would uh, be smaller as well. So, if you use a finer grid which only has uh, half of the grid size, you can see in the bottom graph, which shows the relative error of the velocity magnitude per cell, it shows that the error next to the coupling interface, it also reduces by approximately half. So the error that we have to expect uh, is basically linearly dependent on the uh, mesh size. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So lastly, uh, I wanted to to see what happens if we have a non-orthogonal mesh. And you can see again uh, a pipe scenario. Uh, this is the deformed pipe. And you can see the cells next to the interface, they are a bit deformed. And this causes us to make it hard that um, to extrapolate the values at the boundaries that we exchange by a precise. So they are not 100% uh, accurate because we can't take or we do not take the geometry of the cells into account. Uh, this again can lead to uh, problematic mass flow differences. For example, for this scenario, I measured a mass flow rate of 7.82 on the left hand side and a mass flow rate of 7.77 on the right hand side. And this is of course problematic, but uh, I implemented a small fix uh, to correct the velocity values in precise via the uh, for the phase flux values that you can also obtain from the open foam solvers. So this is done to at least have mass consistency, but um, it's not a perfect uh, fix. So we have to keep in mind things that things are more complicated if you use non-orthogonal meshes next to the interface as well. So yeah, you can also have a look at this um, case in the precise tutorials on the it's still on the ff uh, toots branch so you have to check out this branch to see this case and after investigating the general capabilities of the adapter i tried to extend it also a little bit and first of all i added temperature to the exchange variables in the fluid fluid coupling module and for this i used the test case uh, flow over heated wall which is a simple pipe flow uh, where at the bottom of the pipe, a small segment of the wall is heated. And uh, all the other walls are adiab adiabatic walls. And you can see at the bottom image the um, results. You can see the streamlines of the flow and you can see the velocity. Uh, you can see the temperature that is uh, diffusing quickly into the fluid. The coupling interface or where I cut the domain is just right behind the heated wall segment. And the results are for temperature for this case were very uh, satisfying. You can see here that the coupled results of the temperature, they match the monolithic um, values very closely. And interestingly, uh, the results stayed the same regardless of the direction of the Dirichlet Neumann coupling for temperature. So again, temperature is coupled via Dirichlet Neumann coupling, meaning that we send the temperature values in one direction and the gradient values in the other direction. But it came to the same results regarding of the direction of the Dirichlet Neumann coupling. So that was very interesting and very satisfying results for this uh, test case. And the second extension that I added to the adapter are um, custom inlet outlet boundary conditions. So these are special open foam boundary conditions that um, uh, come shipped with the adapter. Now, well, it's still on a um, developing branch, uh, but will be added to the main branch soon, I assume. And these boundary conditions um, can be set by the users on both sides of the coupling interface and they can dynamically switch their behavior depending on the underlying flow direction. So there's one for pressure, coupled pressure boundary condition, which uses the before established um, fixed flux boundary condition. If we have an inflow at the boundary and if there's an outflow at the boundary, it uses a fixed value boundary condition. On the other hand, there's the coupled velocity boundary condition which uses a fixed value for inflow and a fixed gradient for outflow. So to test these boundary conditions, I use the flow over backward facing step scenario, where in the beginning of the simulation, um, 
the flow is always going from left to right, so from the left participant into the right participant. But in the end, you can see the recirculation area behind the step um, has traveled right through the coupling interface. And we can see that the uh, behavior of the boundary conditions uh, successfully switched for the um, for the bottom cells. Otherwise, we would have not gotten these nice results. You can also check out this example on the FFTOOTS branch of the Precise Tutorials uh, repository. And now coming finally to a conclusion, uh, I would say that implicit, implicit surface coupling with open form and precise is uh, very well possible. Of course, there's a little bit of an error that we uh, have to respect in the cells next to the interface. But this error can be reduced if we follow some recommendations. First of all, we try to use, um, we try to place a coupling interface in locations where the uh, velocity profile is not changing much, meaning that we have a low velocity gradient there. Also, we can use a finer mesh around the interface, though you have to keep in mind that this might come with a um, time stepping constraint. And also, I would recommend to use an orthogonal mesh around the interface just to keep any problems uh, stemming from non-orthogonality uh, out as well. And lastly, you can check out the updated fluid fluid coupling tutorials on the branch FFTOOTS of the tutorials repository. I plan that there are more uh, tutorials coming soon as well. And you might, especially for the backwards facing step scenario, uh, you might have to switch the open foam adapter also to the branch uh, FF develop. Uh, I hope you liked the talk and uh, if you have any questions regarding fluid fluid coupling, uh, feel free to write me an email. Uh, I'd be glad to answer you. Thanks for listening to the talk and enjoy the rest of the workshop. Bye. All right, so uh, I will answer your, your questions. Uh, yes, Prasad. Uh, for example, we, uh, depending on the test, uh, test case we was presented initially, uh, so what I can think of is I have like a coarse mesh in a general area and then I have a fine mesh. So what are the effects of using a fine mesh in, like for example, the, uh, like a second party spin? You said what are the, the disadvantages? Uh, for example, we have a coarse mesh for party, uh, participant or solver A and fine mesh for participant B. So what might be the effects of... Uh, okay, what, what are the effects of using a, a very coarse mesh on the one and a very fine mesh on the other? Um, you will have some um, non-orthogonality essentially because the cell centers, uh, the line that connects the cell centers is not perpendicular to the interface. And um, uh, this is also one of the observations that uh, Marcus had that uh, as much as possible, try to at least not have uh, this, this angle very different. Um, and this is specific to flow coupling. Uh, we have not really observed such issues in uh, FSI, for example. Um, uh, of course, you should also uh, try to use a high quality uh, mapping there. Yes, Philip. Um, to try to prove this error, could you extrapolate in some way? So you have your values in the interface, which you know are correct because you have the terms that are created in this you can ask open for lots of fields that you could like try extrapolate using like a linear or higher order. Mm -hmm. Like ask for values in the process center, ask for a gradient, construct, use your RBS, construct something, and then mm -hmm. you might be able to control better at a greater rate. Okay, so uh, the question was, um, I think uh, related to the to this uh, slide, uh, where we have some temporary fields that uh, we cannot directly access to couple, um, but the comment was, can't we just uh, interpolate, extrapolate uh, these values? Um, that's actually a, a good point. Uh, we did not. Um, 
uh, ha had the time to uh, to look into into this direction. Uh, what we tried was um, coupling also this, but then you have a coupling that is specific to open foam because you need to, on the other side to also have open foam. And this would be great if you want to couple, for example, different open foam versions and things like that. Um, but that's, that's a good suggestion that we could also try uh, extrapolating, but then we would need to modify the adapter to know that it is operating in such a condition. So it would again become a bit application specific. And uh, all of this is um, also specific to the architecture of the adapter that is using this function object interface and can only be called in the outer loop um, iteration. Uh, if uh, we were to couple a specific um, solver, then we could probably access such fields um, additionally. Yes, Chris. Is it possible to couple on the cell values rather than on the faces? So could we overlap the two domains by one cell? That's, so the question was, uh, Instead of coupling the, um, the surface, ca could we couple uh, the, w could we overlap the domains? Uh, this is actually um, the, the second main approach that people use for fluid-fluid coupling. And if you look, for example, at uh, uh, thermohydraulics, uh, they have, for example, uh, the, um, th that's a project that uh, I have also worked on, where you have um, the cooling system of a nuclear reactor, which is usually a 1D system code, and you replace one part uh, with uh, CFT. And the question is, do you cut the pipe and insert a 3D domain, or do you overlap? Um, people do both, and uh, in some cases uh, it is uh, easier to, to have this overlapping. Um, there has also been a project um, by um, Marta Sams, uh, comes in, uh, um, in the UK in her PhD. She overlapped essentially a lattice Boltzmann domain uh, with open foam for um, wind uh, uh, simulations, uh, for, for wind around the city simulations. And she did exactly that. She had an overlap because then you needed to also integrate um, uh, to, to sample essentially um, from the lattice Boltzmann to go to the safety. Next question? Yes, uh, here. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was talk about the boundary condition being used to inlet of this domain to give it the, the set of. The actual question I have is what type of boundary condition? I know, I know we're using precise here uh, to set the values there. But are the values being set as like uh, fixed values or fixed gradients? And is there a possibility of using like a fixed value on one side and fixed gradient on the other side, competing the gradients between the two couples? Are you asking uh, in general or about the uh, reverse flow, like with uh, backwards facing step? Uh, I was thinking of where it was partition, flow partition. Uh, okay, okay, so the question was. Um, we have here, uh, we, we cut it in half, and we're exchanging velocity, pressure, and the gradients, and the question is what kind of boundary conditions in open foam do we use? Um, something that Marcus did not uh, mention um, concretely is that this case we had already studied and presented in the open foam workshop in 2019, and we had already observed these uh, strange jumps that we could not explain. And there we had used a uh, uh, fixed value and fixed gradient, uh, specific, uh, respectively for the Dirichlet and uh, Neumann uh, conditions. And uh, what Marcus uh, found out was that, okay, it is not enough to, to just use this uh, uh, fixed value, fixed gradient, but the first you can do is to um, use this fixed flux extrapolated pressure, uh, which, um, um, if I understood correctly, corrects uh, the pressure based on the information that it has next to the interface, ba based on the velocity, actually, information to, to conserve the, the flux. There was another question, yes? I was wondering if you could 
was just wondering if um, yeah, are there um, existing periodic boundaries um, inside the new form? And if you could probably think, hey, I just use the same tactics like the uh, periodic boundary condition just to like, couple the middle of the file. Or if there are no periodic boundary conditions, maybe you could use like a precise um, adapter book to simulate uh, periodic boundary conditions. So, I'm not sure if um, by periodic conditions you essentially mean um, what exactly uh, domain decomposition uh, tries to do, uh, because the the periodic here we cannot assume, uh, right? Um, however, uh, open foam itself solves the same problem by cutting a domain in multiple parts and essentially coupling these subdomains for parallelization. And uh, this is something that I think uh, Marcus very briefly uh, tried. And um, of course it, uh, it works, uh, but then again it's, uh, it's very specific to, um, to, open foam, to open foam coupling. You cannot just do it with any arbitrary other uh, solver. Any other question? Uh, yes? This might be open form specific, but if, you want, um, if I'm doing like a weight in my simulation, like interface simulation, do you anticipate the arrows at the interface to be similar to what you have in your front face? All right, so the question was if I have a wave um, in my simulation, so I had a two-phase simulation, correct? Um, would I anticipate the same error? Uh, so I, I'm not really sure if uh, Marcus mentioned it at the end, uh, but um, this is something that we, uh, we are currently looking into. So um, we, we also want to be able to couple uh, two-phase flows. And... Uh, um, First results, I, I think, were uh, rather positive, but I cannot, uh, I cannot present anything at this moment. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I would now like to...